Hey, hey, good people, how you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of NextLevelGuitar.com. What's up? Hope all is well, and I hope your guitar journeys are going famously. And today we are going to continue with our series on lead rock guitar, beginner lead rock guitar, and this is going to be part five in our continuing series. And in this uh, lesson, we're going to go over string bending, part two, and uh, we're going to get into some whole step bends within the scale that we're working with. And we're using this lesson as a template. And you could do this in other keys over other jam tracks. And the jam track we're going to be using today, um, we're using the same jam track and scale pattern throughout this whole series of lessons. I'm going to show you the scale in a minute. And the jam track is going to be at the end of this lesson. So be sure and practice over that track to really hone your skills and use jam tracks. They're an essential tool for uh, uh, the, the guitar student to really think about what notes they're choosing and soloing over. It's, there's chords underneath, you're landing on certain notes, and to work on the rhythm within your solo. So jam tracks are critical. I would not steer you wrong. Real quick, if you'd like a free video lesson that's not on YouTube and a coinciding ebook where I diagram out like 21 scales, including the scale we're going to work on today, um, just click in the link in the text box below this video, and I'll send them both to you. Click on that link, follow the screens, you'll get a free ebook and a free video lesson uh, from Next Level Guitar. It's good stuff, check it out. And uh, we're in the key of B minor for this whole series, and the jam track we're using is a 1-4-5 minor key blues, which I will put at the end of this lesson, so you could use that as a practice tool. The scale we're using is our minor pentatonic and blues scale, but we're using the expanded version, where we're playing over the neck, over three box shapes, so you could really start gliding in and out of the scale. And I taught you that scale in previous lessons. If you didn't see it, here it is. I'll show you the scale. So get real comfortable with that scale. And just practice it up and back, up and back, and build up the speed. And get really comfortable with that and know where the root notes are. And in the previous lesson, you learned about using that half step bend. And hopefully you've been practicing that, right? And we learned those half step bends and bending the nine, bending to the blue note, right? And we're, the things that we're concentrating on is that we're bending to a target note. So we have a pitch in mind and we're working on our feel, feeling for where that bend is. And also we're listening to make sure we're hitting that bend. We want to make sure, like I'm bending from the 9th to the 10th fret, I'm hitting that 10th fret pitch. I'm, I'm hitting that D, I'm bending from the C sharp to the D, and I'm not bending it too short. See, that's flat. Or I'm not bending it too much sharp. See, you want to hit it every time. And I gave you a cool little practice idea where you can use a tuner, plug your guitar straight into a tuner, chromatic tuner, and just bend notes and then watch as that pitch goes up on the meter and you want to hit it dead center every time. Not be too sharp, not be too flat. Bang, bang. Five, ten minutes a day. Your string bending is an evolution. Now we're going to get into harder bends that are going to require more strength, more control, whole step. So let's look at the great whole step bends within this scale. Um, uh, for these bends, you want to work down and bend. You'll be bending more on the G string, the B string, and the high E string than on the lower strings. Um, so, a uh, fantastic bend uh, in this scale is bending that uh, whole step, we're bending up to the root. So on the B string, we're going to bend the 10th fret, that A note, up to the B. So the B is the note we're shooting for, our root note. There it is. So take that, now one finger per fret. So I got a finger on the 7th, finger on the 8th, finger on the ninth, finger on the 10th. Fingers are cupped about my fingertips and I'm going to push up until I hit that pitch. See how I can match that pitch? Alright, that's a whole step bend because we're bending that note up two frets and that's a great bend because remember in a lot of these series I'm talking about resolving our licks to the root note. We're bending up in this instance to the root note so it's a great full step bend. And then right underneath that we have another great bend. Uh, again, one finger per fret so now we're on the high E string so put your first finger on the 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th and we're bending that 10th fret up to the 12th fret. We're bending the D up to the E. So there's a note we're hitting, that E. Notice how I'm matching that pitch, I'm practicing it. Right? And 
and that's a great bend. Now with those bends, you could do bend and release. Same techniques and devices I talked about on the half step bends. Bend it up, pull it down, and hold it. And then if you release that, pull off, you have your root note right there on the first uh, finger, seventh fret on the high E string. You can bend it up uh, twice, three times. You could bend it up and hold it and strike it. Let it down slow. Again, there's so much you can do with the string bends. You can do the jerk the chain bends like I talked about in the previous lesson where you bend it up real quick and, and pull it down with one pick. That's the motion. Now I want to do it fast. See when I do it fast, you get that wow, that real. And again, you could pull off on the B string to that first finger. Resolve it back down to the root note. Those are two really killer whole step bends. Uh, another whole step bend I like to do is on the G string, ninth fret. Remember, we were bending that a half step to the blue note. And we were also sliding it to that blue note. But you could bend that a whole step also because remember, the note after the blue note, we have our F sharp. So all those notes are in the scale. Uh, uh, F being our blue note, F sharp being our fifth in the key of B. So you could bend this a half step on the G string, ninth fret. Or you could bend it a whole step. Now when you bend it a whole step, get it up there. And a real common bend is, in the, especially in the blues, is they'll bend that a half, pull it off to the seventh fret, and get right, then get back right on it and bend it a whole step. Notice there, again I'm resolving it, pull off, 7th fret G string, ninth fret D string, there's my root note. And then I have that double stop which we learned about in previous lessons, B string on the 7th fret, G string 7th fret. That's a great one to slide out of. Double stop ninth fret, G and B string. You can do those same exact bends an octave up that we were doing just now with the blue note and going to the, to the whole step also, uh, half step above the blue note. On the G string, we were bending that a whole step and a half step. You could do that same exact thing on the 12th fret. One, it's just one octave up, same notes. So we have, uh, uh, you should have all your fingers, put a finger on the 10, 11, and 12. And then you bend that a half step, you have your blue note because we're bending to the 13th fret, that F. But you can also bend that up to the F sharp. Whole step. Now over here you have your root note, the B on the 12th fret of the B string. Right? So you got so many bends right there. You got half step, 12 to 13. Release it. End it on your root note, or you can bend that up a whole step. Half step. Whole step. There's that beautiful double stop, G string, uh, 11th fret, B string, 10th fret. So let's see how these bends sound over the jam track. We'll mix in the halves and the holes. Here's the one on the G string, bending to the blue note, half step. Now, whole step bend to the root. I'm on the B string, and I'm bending at 10th up to the 12th. Leave lots of space. So you see how that, that, that was a winner bending, right, up to that uh, root note on the B string. But remember, one finger per fret, and use all of those fingers when you're bending. Use as many as possible. More strength, more accuracy. I'm a big believer and then I know I see a lot of people bending this like with their third finger or bending it even with their second or trying to do bends with one finger or two. You'll get so much more strength accuracy if you use more fingers, especially if you start to get into things like vibrato and bend in vibrato where you're going to need a little bit more strength where you're holding a note and vibratoing it up a whole step. Or even when you're starting to get into minor third bends where you're bending up a step and a half or two whole steps, 
you're going to need that strength, right? Let's try some of those other bends I showed you over the track. Here's the, um, let's try that one where we're going to bend the high E string, 10th to 12th fret. Well, that's a cool lick, actually. I bent it up a whole step, let it down, hit it again, release to the first finger, 7th fret, high E string. That's our root note. There's a bend to the root note. And there's our bend to the blue note. How's that? There's that little first finger bend on the G string, bending that flat to major third, seventh fret. Taking my time, little short burst of notes. Let's try up here, 10 and 12 fret. Now I'm bending that half step from the 12th to 13th of the blue note. There's that whole step bend. There's a big batch of whole step bends to get started with to really practice, listen for that pitch to make sure you're bending them and hitting that target note. Practice the target note bending, use your tuner to practice, and also you're going to start to mix up your, all these techniques and devices together. Notice when I was playing there for a bit, I was bending my half string, half step bends, right? And then I was doing a pull off lick, and then I was mixing it into a, a whole step bend, then I was sliding right with the first finger i was adding a passing tone i was adding that ninth all these things we've been talking about now i'm just doing basic beginner things here i'm not really going outside much this scale i'm not doing anything over each chord I'm just playing over all the chords what relates to all this minor pentatonic and blues expanded scale because we're in the key of b minor and you're going to start to throw all those techniques together do a, you know do that pull off riff do that pull off riff like we talked about Right? Then do it again. Throw in that little first finger bend. Stop. Double stop. First finger bend. Slide. to get a melodic phrase that you can repeat. I'm just doing that first finger bend and the blue note bend. See how I'm combining all the things that we've talked about so far. Here's that whole step bend to the root. Add your double stops and double stop bends, like we talked about. There's that bend on the ninth. So have fun. Give yourself plenty of fun time on guitar. Remember, string bending is an evolution. It's going to take a long time, and you'll just get better and better and better with it as you go along. So don't get discouraged. It's, it's a challenging aspect of lead guitar, especially at first, because you're not going to be hitting that pitch every time. You've got to really work on practicing the, hitting those notes. Um, so uh, remember, too, go to the website, nextlevelguitar.com. There's over 1,100 video lessons where we get in deep, deep people, uh, uh, all genres of music, all styles, beginner, intermediate, advanced. There's a three-day free pass right on the homepage. Try it out for three days. You'll really like it, I'm telling you. Um, you have nothing to lose. Give it a try, and if you want another free video lesson and that comes with a free ebook that I wrote, click on that link below, follow the screens, and I'll send it to you, that, send it to you for free from nextlevelguitar.com. All right, I'm David Taub, co creator of nextlevelguitar.com. You're the good people. Uh, keep putting those guitars in your hand every day. Remember, your lead guitar playing and your rhythm playing is an evolution. Don't forget to continually work on your rhythm playing also. Um, so important because most of the time when you're playing guitar you're going to be playing rhythm solos and leads only a small little part um, so in my opinion your your lead guitar playing is really only ever as good as your rhythm playing all right hope this helps enjoy keep on rocking we'll see you in the next lesson rock on